Okay, hello and good afternoon everyone. Uh, Laura here, I'm a trainee solicitor at Laudit and I'm joined by my supervising solicitor Inam Ali who is the head of the property department. Um, so yes, we've got the property team here today um, ready to talk to you about searches and in particular um, a chancel check search. Um, so just a brief summary before um, I dive into some questions with Inam. Um, a chancel uh, check search looks at a property's potential liability to contribute um, to the cost of repairing the chancel of a church um, if the property is located in that vicinity. Um, so yes, so if you're if you're the buyer of a property, it's very useful to have this search um, provides you with this important information to kind of say yes, you are liable to pay in the future, or no, you're not. Um, yeah, pot potential, yeah, potential liability in the future. Yeah. Um, so um, I think they, what they do is they check records, and um, they will see if um, there's potential um, for a property. Um, to be in a, you know where it's located in a parish which has a potential liability um, and um, you, you can basically um, then make a decision accordingly mm -hmm. yeah agreed thank you and um would you say that would you agree that this search because there's no there's a number of searches that you as um, a buyer solicitor can obtain would you agree that this is one of the quicker ones to come back with the result definitely so this uh, the, usually the results that we get are within a day so sometimes within an, uh, within a couple of hours um, the results are a little bit um, uh, brief um, they will just confirm if there's a potential liability for this property um, so they check certain registers um, and, and they'll come back with a very quick little result. Um, what you can do, if there is a potential liability, then they, the, usually the search providers do offer a whole range of different indemnity policies that you can take out. Um, so they will vary, so they can be for like a 25 year period or they can be for an, an unlimited uh, period, which is called perpetual uh, period. Um, and then the costs will vary accordingly. But I think you're looking at something in the region of under fifty pounds for the shorter period, um, to um, to you know it increases from there to maybe a hundred pounds or more um, if it's for a perpetual period, and for future owners of the property as well. Um, so yeah, there's various different options that you can have if you want to take an indemnity policy, um, but a lot of the time. You know, clients, buyers vary in, in their view on chancellor repair liabilities because the, there's not um, a great deal of um, reports, um, you know, suggesting that um, it's a common liability that you have to pay. Um, and even if a liability does come through the door, the church would um, issue the, the, the liability, uh, it would share it out to... Um, a number of properties within its parish rather than an individual rather than select an individual property um, to charge this to um, so I think it, it kind of comes goes back to um, uh, you know medieval times mm -hmm. when uh, you had church parishes and you had a certain number of of homes in that parish who used to um, attend that church and the the idea was that you know the the actual churchgoers would contribute towards um, maintenance of and repair to the chancel of the church. Mm -hmm. And Laura, I think you you were confirming earlier to me before this podcast what the chancel was. Um, did you say it was the it's where the clergy and the choir would sit um, in the church? So it's like a specific area in the church. In itself. the church itself, yes, and that's right. Um, so yeah, um, and it, I think it, it's it's in relation to um, the yeah yeah. I think um, it, and sorry, can I just ask because you were mentioning about an indemnity policy? Uh, when is it that you would you would look to take this indemnity policy out? Because obviously, as you're looking to indemnify yourself and the property, you can't. You can't take it out after you find out that you're potentially liable for these costs. Is it something that you would you would look to potentially take out beforehand, or? Yeah. So, um, I mean, they um, the I think the indemnity insurance would really you would want to take it out 
before you receive a liability. Mm-hmm. I think if you take an indemnity policy out after you receive the, uh, the, the liability, it w- the insurance wouldn't cover it. It would be void. Um, it? That's right, it would be void. Um, so a bit like if you were taking out a car insurance mm-hmm. after you've had an accident, you, you know, your insurance company wouldn't cover it. Um, yeah, that's a good example so, to put yeah. into context. Yeah, um, and just just another just to touch on um, generally generally on chancel repairs. Um, so uh, before the, there was the, uh, we've now got the Land Registration Act two thousand and two. Um, that basically um, before that this, the the situation was that chancel re- uh, repair liability it used to be an overriding interest. So it's, that's a legal term. Um, that basically means that the liability existed without having to be noted on the title register or on the deeds of the property. Um, so it would be quite difficult to to tell if the liability exist uh, liability existed. I see. Um, so um, and then what happened was the the government introduced the Land Registration Act. Um, excuse the noise there. The sirens. Um, yeah. Um, the Land Registration Act two thousand two was uh, came into force and. Um, basically, that removed the chancel repair liability. Um, it's it's um, status as an overriding interest, mm-hmm. um, and instead, what they did was they um, they required the um, any um, parish church that wanted to protect its um, ability to charge chancel repair liability, they'd have to register um, on the title register to the properties. Um, it would be registered as a caution on on the property, mm-hmm. and um, so that would you know the the idea behind that was to create more certainty so that if you were about to buy a property, if there was a chancel repair liability caution on the property, then it would you'd know that there would be a potential there could be a potential liability in the future, and then you could technically um, maybe you could then take an insurance policy out, um, but the only problem with that was that um, um, the, the sheer number of properties, um, it would take quite a long time for, you know, a church to register, you know, depending on the area and how many yeah. houses there are in that area. Um, it could take them quite a while to get all the, you know, registrations done. So um, there's a bit of a grey area in that respect because, you know, there might be a parish church which wants to protect its um it's um, chancel repair liability, mm-hmm. um, but it hasn't yet registered the the actual no, the notice on the on the on the register the relevant registers for the properties. Yeah, I see. Um, I see. So I think this is that's where you'd like sort of you'd have to make a decision really um, whether you want to take an indemnity policy out um, at the time of purchasing the property um, and working out what the cost you know cost or risk basis um, and the search itself it doesn't cost a great deal it's one um, of the one of the, the cheaper, cheaper ones, ones isn't it yeah. yeah so I mean we when we do the, if we're asked, when we do the chancel search we um, the cost provider the, the, sorry, the search provider um, charges £24 so I think it's £20 plus VAT mm-hmm. um, which is actually quite a small amount of money in, in the grand scheme of things um, when you're buying a property, so a lot of um, buyers will want to still have one done, um, and then they make a de- you know they make a decision when we see the results and we report on the results. How to proceed? Yeah, yeah. how to proceed if they're yeah, to because do. if it comes back saying you're you're not liable to pay any costs, you're not in this vicinity, then yeah. there's nothing, no further action needs to be taken. You've just got the proof from the search that that you know you're not you're not liable. Um, would you recommend uh, this? Would you say this is quite an important search to have carried out if you're a buyer? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I would. Yeah, um, I, I think it's worth having it because um, you, you know I've not seen an actual result where it says there is a definite um, liability. Um, you know, there's, this property is registered within an area where definite liability exists. Um, but I have seen where it was where it says potential, mm-hmm. um, but it's you know just in case you know you have a property which is in a definite area, then it's worth having that search I think and having that knowledge before you buy the property. Yeah, definitely. Just and being as aware as as possible. Of that's right. Any liabilities that may come. 
in the future. Exactly, and and you know if you if there's a potential liability, then you can ask. Um, you, there can be more inquiries that we can raise specifically about the chancel. Um, we can ask the, the sellers: Have they received any such demand before in the past, or how are they? Do they have knowledge of any previous buyer mm-hmm. before they bought the property mm-hmm. um, of any chancel repair liability? I think that would be a good indication as well. If if you know that church and that you know is is actively charging for chancel repairs um, and if it has done if there's any history of it in the past so that would be useful as well yeah I think that's we've covered about most of it now yeah for chancel repair chancel repair but um, other other searches we could do um, which we normally do is local authority search environmental search uh, um, water and drainage 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 search as well yeah that's right they're kind of the the main four that we that's right we try and you know stick to yes um and the additional ones can be um depending on the location of the property you can have um a coal coal mining search um so if you're in the midlands or if certain areas of the southwest like cornwall um where mining was uh, it was uh, you know active mining regions um then coal mining search or other kind of mining search is is worth having um, and that would indicate if there was any mines in that area Um, uh, and if the property could be you know potentially subject to you know if it was in the vicinity of a mine um, Mm -hmm. that that could obviously have impacts of um, potential um, uh, subsidence basically um, or movement in the building itself and that could also then affect your potential building insurance in the future when you insure the building. So it's worth having those in those certain areas. There's also um, additional uh, elements that you can have. You can have a flooding search um, done specifically, which um, it does feature in the environmental search. Yes. It does and the water briefly. and drainage search as well. Mm-hmm. But um, you can have a separate flooding, you know, specific flooding search done, which will indicate, so if your property is near, um, if it's situated in a flood plain mm-hmm. or um, near a river or stream or even next to the, near the coast, then you can have a, a flood, pay, a flood um, search done. Uh, that will give you more indication about, you know, potential future uh, likelihood of a flood occurring, either from coastal um, sea floods or from a river or even surface water flooding, mm-hmm. um, you know, especially in towns and cities where we've, you know, uh, booked up areas, you have more likelihood of surface water flooding um, from all the rain runoff. Um, and uh, yeah, and there's another search which you can have is a HS2. So this is the high speed railway um, link from London to various other, I think it's Manchester, potentially Birmingham, Manchester. And I think it's going to be going to um, Sheffield, potentially yeah. Leeds. Um, Leeds, I believe. Um, I've not come across that search Yeah, before. so that one is, um, so basically you're just checking the route and you're seeing if it's anywhere near that. Um, uh, you know, uh, I think some of the part of the route is, I'm not sure where they are with the, with the construction of the route, um, but in the past few years during construction, there certainly was a HS2, um, you know, um, searches done by a lot of conveyances mm-hmm. just to check especially if you're buying in London etc yes then you'd want to check if you know your property's uh, near to or standing in the way of them of the hitches to potential you know the map of where they want to construct it um, so that was obviously a concern uh, for, for buyers um, but you can still have that done now mm-hmm. and and I think HS do have their um, that you can check on a on the maps on um, a website um, which also indicate where the where the actual routes are, um, and I think these these sort of this route I think it's obviously is being expanded and it will it be expanded in the future, uh, being a high high speed railway mm-hmm. link um, connecting all all the corners of the country. So um, I think there will be potential um, expansion of it in the future. Um, so it's worth sort of just bearing that in the back of your mind. Um, so yeah, that's that's worth checking as well. Definitely a lot of considerations when buying a property. Then a lot of things to take into account and Def- searches definitely. to consider depending on the location of your property. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. 
Um, but yeah, I think I think that's about it with the with the transfer transfer uh, repair search. Um, thank you very much, Inam, for for taking the time to to um, do this podcast, and thank you to um, all of our listeners. Um, the property team will be back soon with some more podcasts about. Maybe we could expand on some other searches next time. Yeah. You know, maybe a local authority or environmental water and drainage. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you for listening.